The Pac-12's marquee matchup of the weekend pits the preseason pick USC against the current frontrunner Washington, Chris Fetters and Ryan Abraham. Here to break down this top 20 meeting with us, the Huskies riding a 15-game win streak, the second longest streak in program history, and USC narrowly avoiding its first three-game losing streak of the Lincoln-Riley era with a one-point victory over Cal. Plenty of points in this one, and maybe a passing of the Heisman torch. So that's where we will begin. This matchup presents a problem for the reigning Heisman winner, Caleb Williams. He's 20 and 0 when facing unranked teams, but three and seven against top 25 teams. That includes 0 and 2 this season against Notre Dame and Utah. So Ryan, what will it take for Caleb Williams to finally get over the hump this weekend? Yeah, you got to see him play to that Heisman quality, you know, the caliber that we saw from last season. We thought coming into this, you know, his numbers could have been up there where he could uh, repeat as the Heisman winner. He'd go head-to-head uh, -head against guys like Michael Penix and, and Bo Nix next, Bo next, next week. But, you know, he's fallen off uh, the last few weeks, just hasn't been himself there. And I think it's a combination of things with maybe the offensive line not blocking as well. Not having a number one, you know, clear number one wide receiver like they had with Jordan Addison last year, but he's got all the talent in the world. He's got he's just a special player when it comes to it's time to make a play. He can go out and do that. So I know everyone's been talking around USC this week. There's a lot of negativity and the fan base and everything, but they seem pretty fired up uh, for this one. And I think Caleb Williams is someone that, you know, when the when the lights get bright, he wants to go out there and perform. So I, I think you're going to see a little bit better from Caleb Williams, but he's got to he's got to play sharp. I think. He was, a, he was sharp through most of the games last year, even when they lost. We saw him not be as sharp in some of the games he lost this year. So I think he's got to increase that a little bit, and they should be okay. Yeah, and it's not like playing Caleb Williams is going to be, you know, a, a real great matchup for any defense. But then you look at Washington and some of the things that they've really struggled on. Two of the main things on defense, guys, is the, the, the pass rush. For instance, Braylon Trice had 16 pressures against Stanford and still really didn't affect Ashton Daniels all that much. And then on the back end, they're giving up some bigger plays, some explosive plays. And if they're not doing that, then sometimes they give up the pass interference calls. So this is gonna be the ultimate test, the toughest test that Washington has faced by far so far, because Bo Nix for as good as he is and as good as he played against Washington, he is still, uh, you know, compared to a Caleb Williams, a little bit more of a game manager a little bit more of a guy that runs and things like that. Whereas Caleb Williams is all about getting out there, scrambling, making things happen with his feet and with his arm, finding guys downfield and making big plays. And that's just something that Washington is going to have to try to contain because they're just not going to completely stop a guy like him. We'll go flip side of the ball. Now Washington's top two wide receivers have combined for more receiving yards than some entire FBS teams have had all season now they're facing a USC defense, which we've heard the complaints all season long, but it's giving up 43 points a game in its last five games. Uh, Chris, how do you expect the Trojans to limit the Huskies' offensive attack if they can do that at all? Well, I think it starts, ironically enough, with the run game. And Arizona State showed that if you can stop Washington and make them totally one-dimensional. I mean, Washington has still had to have a semblance of a run game you know, to, to really make that passing game go with the play action and all the things that Michael Penix Jr. can do off of those types of plays, they have to have still a little bit of a run game just to keep things honest for defenses. But ASU shoot Washington down completely in the run game and made them completely one-dimensional, and Michael Penix just really struggled in that game too. And we found out he wasn't necessarily 100% too. He was dealing with some illness, dealt with some illness also against Stanford. He, you know, told us this week that he's back to 100%. He's ready to go. He's feeling great. So we'll see how that works with there. But I think it starts with USC trying to really completely dominate Washington in terms of the run game. If they can stop Dylan Johnson, if they can really make it so that every single down, Ryan Grubb is going to have to call a pass play in some form or fashion, even if it's just to the flats, you know, like an extended run play, something like that they have a good chance of being able to create some third and long situations. And even though Washington's been very, very good in those types of situations, they're not infallible. I mean, they will find a way to get off the field because USC is just that good, that talented in terms of the athletes they have and the speed that they have on defense.
Well, Chris, if you want to uh, have a team convert third and longs, you can play USC and you'll probably do a pretty good job of that. I mean, USC gave up 49 points to Cal last weekend, uh, almost lost that game. Michael Penix Jr., those wide receivers, this is going to be a completely different story. It just seems week after week we hear the same sort of things. There was a blown assignment or missed call, whatever it was, and somehow USC gives up more and more and more points. Those first four games when they didn't play great competition, you know, Stanford's th thrown in there 20 points a game. And like Grace said, up to 43 points a game. Uh, you know, 49 points, that's the most points given up uh, in the Lincoln-Riley era. It's not getting better. It seems to be getting worse. And if you want to try to get right on the defensive side of the ball, you don't want to face a guy like Michael Penix who can throw it all over the field. And, you know, Washington's offense might not be, have been as prolific the past few weeks. But for whatever reason, this USC defense just seems to make players go, you know, they can hit their high water mark. They can get their career highs. And if you're not doing that well, you can go through and uh, and, and come through and have one of your bigger games. So not what you want to see going into this one. Uh, we'll see if they can get some stops because I think they've been better at generating some stops. But, man, they just keep giving up touchdown after touchdown. 49 points to Cal is kind of all you need to see. It's It could be a long one. A lot of, a lot of points scored, like you said, Grace, uh, in the Coliseum Saturday. Yeah, this is starting to feel like first team to 50 wins. Both rank top 10 highest scoring teams in the FBS, averaging at least 40 points a game. So we know these quarterbacks have just a stable of skill players to rely on. But Chris, which offensive weapon will you be watching the most? Well, again, ironically, it's not going to be the receivers because guys like Roma Dunzi, Jalen Polk, they're known quantities. Everyone knows about them now, and, and they rely on them heavily, as well as even the tight ends. Guys like Devin Culp, Jack Westover have been huge parts of this passing game this year. The guy I'm going to, uh, again, kind of t focus on is the main running back for Washington right now, and that's Dylan Johnson. Dylan Johnson is a guy that has really come on of late when Washington has had to try to salt games away from home against Arizona, against Stanford, they leaned heavily on Dylan Johnson to get the job done. And he was able to do that. And so I think getting Johnson on track early with some runs, get him into the end zone. He scored against Stanford, scored against Oregon. He, he, he has a knack for finding the end zone. So if, he, if they can get him on track and get him some good carries, really get that offense moving as far as the running game goes, that opens everything up in the playbook for Ryan Grubb and Michael Penix Jr. So I really think Dylan Johnson holds the key to this game because he can not only run the ball well, but he's really, really good in the flats, really good as a receiver. We've seen how, you know, USC has maybe struggled a little bit defensively with running backs. You look at Sione Vaki from, from Utah. You even go back to like ASU with Scadabo. You know, you, you've got guys that have been able to have a little bit of success out of the backfield catching the ball against the Trojans. And Dylan Johnson made a meal of that. When he was at Mississippi State, they threw the ball to him all over the place uh, in Mike Leach's air raid offense. So I think Dylan Johnson really holds a lot of the cards in this game. If he can get on track and if he can really be an all-purpose guy for Washington in this game, I think that bodes really, really well for the Huskies. And along those same lines, I, I agree with you, Chris. I think the run game is going to be a really important aspect of this. And for USC, Marshawn Lloyd, the uh, – South Carolina transfer had over 100 yards last week against Cal. Uh, 17 carries, which is absolutely crazy. We just haven't seen when they've had success running the ball. Lincoln Riley in the offense, they seem to just kind of get away from it. But, uh, you know, for him to go over 100 yards, they had 26 carries by the running backs in this game. We just hadn't seen something like that this year. I think they really tried to run the ball against Notre Dame a couple weeks ago, but they just didn't have a whole lot of success. They had a lot of success like in the Arizona State game and they got away from it. So this is one where I think if you get that running game going, you're going to be able to put up points. They put up 50 points against Cal and they still punted seven times in the game. There was a lot of possessions, but I feel like getting that run game going is something that is going to help Caleb Williams kind of get back into the rhythm of things. It helps to have a guy like Lloyd who can kind of break a big play and you're not doing anything crazy. You're just handing the ball off, maybe an RPO zone read kind of thing. Uh, but I think what Lloyd was getting going, this offense can go as well. And you might need to control the clock a little bit with a, with a guy like Michael Penix on the other side of the field. So I, to me, I'm going to go with the run game, too, and say uh, Marshawn Lloyd, one of the key guys. 50 points and seven punts. I did not know that. Right? That's got to be a one-of-a-kind box score. Uh, a lot of ways we could go with this, but the key to getting a win, Chris, where are you going? Yeah, well, we spoke this week with linebacker Eddie Ulafoscio, 
who's been around a long time. He was he was <laughs> he was there and played actually when Washington beat USC the last time these two teams played together at Husky Stadium back in 2019. It's been eight years since Washington's even been at USC, and Wa and Washington was actually able to scrape away a win with true freshman Jake Browning and Miles Gaskin leading the way. So this is going to be a real interesting test for this team to go back out on the road and do what they need to do to get another win. But talking to Ula Foscio, he said two things need to get cleaned up immediately. And those two things are turnovers. They've got to win the turnover battle. And then they also have to make sure that they eliminate the costly penalties. They had penalties take them out of drives against Stanford, uh, against uh, Arizona. They've, they've had some interesting uh, you know, things going on with some holding calls and some, again, we talked about early in the, in the show, Grace, the, the pass interference calls down the field. And I think those could loom big on Saturday when you're you know, dealing with a guy like Caleb Williams and, and that uh, receiving group that he has to work with. So I think if they take care of the turnover battle, if they can win the turnover battle, because they've had massive turnover problems the last couple of games, the red zone turnovers they've had, which is just something that you just don't see in a Kalen DeBoer coach team at Washington. So clean those things up. Don't kill yourself with penalties. And I think they stand a good chance of being really, really competitive on Saturday. I think those are really good points. USC won the turnover battle four to one uh, over Cal. But for USC, I'm going to go with the explosive plays because they've just given up explosive plays at an alarming rate uh, 55 plays runs or passes from scrimmage of over 20 yards this season uh co comparison ucla has done has, has given up 18 of those so far this season so just the amount of explosive plays have been absolutely ridiculous uh, alex grinch the defensive coordinator talked about it a little bit and there's always just seems to be a reason there was this there was that this guy this front fit wasn't there the blown assignment missed tackle whatever it is you can't just keep giving up these huge plays game after game. And Lincoln Riley was asked about it. Alex Grinch was asked about it. They don't seem to have a lot of answers. And, oh, oh by the way, Washington's coming in, and they're going to be able to put up a lot of points and big chunk plays. So, for me, if USC's got a ch chance to win this game, they're going to have to give up some, like, 12-yard runs or 12-yard passes and not turn them into 50-yard runs or 50-yard passes because that seems – the way they've been trending. So if they keep doing that, there's just going to be no chance. So keep the explosive plays down a little bit, and that'll that'll give them the best shot. Hey, in these high-variance games, turnovers, explosives, that's typically what it comes down to. So I love the choices, guys. Chris and Ryan, thanks so much. And for more on the game, be sure to check out uscfootball.com and dogman.com for all your Trojans and Huskies football and recruiting news all year long. <laughs>